use it for volunteering. All right, let's get back to it. Mindset is very important, but equally as important is tactical things, right? Things that you can implement today, a week from now, two years from now. So that's now where we're going to hop into. Has anyone heard of the 50, 30, 20 rule? Oh, Jalen, you know, it's time to, it's time to preach. Go ahead. Um, the 50, 30, 20, ooh, 50, 30, 20 rule um, that I've heard is, I don't remember exactly uh, which one is which, if I'm thinking correctly, but I think it's like you live off 50, you save something, you, I don't remember what the other one is, yep, um, but yeah, or like invest something, something yep. like that. I've heard of it. I don't, I'm not an expert in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all good. I got your back. But that is basically right. It is a algorithm or like a, a setup of how you can use your income for your needs, your wants, and your freedom. Highly encourage you. Like I was, I was kind of anti-budget when I was in college. Like I would get refund checks and then they would disappear. <laughs> so I, I, I have a feeling if I would have budgeted, I would have been able to save those refund checks a little bit better, bought a house a little bit sooner, do other things. But, you know, I was I was living that life. So highly encourage you set up your 50, 30, 20 rule. This is 50 percent of your income after taxes goes towards your needs. And for the sake of college students, like y'all can lump in your, your grants, your scholarships, your financial aid, your loan stuff, like all of that is income. As soon as it gets dispersed to you, it's now income. So you should treat it as if it is income. So 50% goes towards your needs. That's rent, mortgage, utilities. You can add your phone in there because I know the phone is almost a necessity at this point. Um, any type of insurance you need, water, food, all of that is should only be 50% of your check. If you're using more than 50%, especially if you're not a student anymore, right? Now you might be in a little bit of trouble on how you can prepare for the future. 30% of your income should be going towards your wants. So this is Hulu and Netflix, your Disney Plus. This is your, uh, your travel, right? How often you go to Vegas, how often you go to Miami, how often you go to Thailand, all that stuff. Your fashion. Uh, I know Rare got a lot of good stuff coming out, but we can only spend so much Rare dollars every single month. You got to make sure we're budgeting only 30% <laughs> that can go towards those things. Um, subscriptions, eating out, um, other hobbies that you might have that cost money should only take up 30% of your income. And then the last 20%, some people call it savings, like Jalen was saying earlier. I call it your freedom fund, right? So it can go towards saving. It can go towards paying off debt. It can go towards investing. It can go towards your buying your first house, but you should have some type of set goal on this freedom fund, right? Again, whether it's paying off debt or buying a house, and then you're constantly saving 20% every single month on autopilot. Set it inside of your, your account and just let it go. Don't even think about it. And then as soon as your account hits 15,000, buy that house. As soon as your account hits, 5,000, go on that international trip. As soon as your account hits 2,000, go ahead and start that business you've always wanted to start, right? So have some, some purpose for those. Questions on crafting the budget before we, we keep it pushing. Go ahead, Don. Nope, okay. Any other questions on crafting the budget? Cool. All good. This is probably, it's kind of important during college, but I know for me personally, I wasn't making crazy money to really be able to really budget budget like that, but still budget. If you can squeeze in a, a freedom fund, that's a, a dope thing to be able to do during college. If you can't just make sure you're managing your needs and your wants as best as possible and not just